Um, I'm an entomologist with the Bureau of Agriculture in the Animal and Plant Health Division. And um, I've been talking about Asian longhorn beetle for it seems like 15 years. Um, and then we kind of stopped talking about it as emerald ash borer became a more serious imminent threat to our state, um, as well as oak wilt. Um, but in doing so, by not talking about it, a lot of people became under the impression that it was no longer a concern for us in the state or that it's already here and no longer a concern. And neither of those things could be further from the truth. So I wanted to give everyone a little bit of update about where Asian longhorn beetle stands um, as far as a serious pest for our country um, and also how to look for it. Next slide, please. Um, so I just a little bit about what an Asian longhorn beetle is. Um, it's in the family Cerambicidae, which is also known, they're known as longhorn beetles. Um, all or most all of them are plant feeders. So you would never see this injuring an animal or a human. It, they don't vector diseases. Um, and there's there's quite a diverse amount of species in the family Cerambicidae. There's over 35,000 species worldwide and over a thousand in the U.S. alone. And in that line of insects that you see, those are all ones that are commonly seen even here in Maine. Um, so just to give you a sense of the diversity of this family of beetles. Uh, Asian longhorn beetle. Oh, can you go back a little bit? <laughs> so, Asian longhorn beetle is in the genus Anaplophora, which is there is no no Anaplophora species native to the United States. They're all native to um, Asia. Okay, you can go forward. Next slide, please. Uh, so. Currently, and I think this is something that a lot of people forget about, is that Asian longhorn beetle is really, you know, we have it pretty well contained in the United States. It's un unlike emerald ash borer and oak wilt, the Asian longhorn beetle can be eradicated. And um, in fact, the USDA has a federal program to eradicate the beetle whenever it's found. So currently, Asian longhorn beetle is only in four states, uh, the latest being in South Carolina, which was just found a couple months ago. Unfortunately, it looks like that could be a fairly sizable population um, with over a thousand trees already infested um, that they found according to survey, which basically means the beetle has been there for quite a while. Um, before anyone reported it or before it was confirmed. So this is this this insect in particular is really important um, in, as an early detection species because we can we can do something about it. We can get rid of it. Um, Illinois eradicated Asian longhorn beetle. New Jersey eradicated Asian longhorn beetle. Um, Boston, Massachusetts. And in the success of the eradication program is when infestations are found early. Next slide, please. So another uh, another um, kind of misinformation about Asian longhorn beetle is that it is it's a hardwood pest. It's actually a healthy hardwood pest. So which is why it's a concern for us. It attacks healthy hardwood trees. It definitely prefers maple. Um, but will attack other trees. It has not known to be shown to attack oak or apple. So those are a couple of hardwood species that we can not worry so much about. Uh, if you see a longhorn beetle associated with conifers, it is not Asian longhorn beetle. It's likely one of our Sawyer beetles. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the life cycle of the beetle, and this might help with trying to identify signs of an infestation. So primarily, Asian longhorn beetle has up to a two year life cycle in the United States. It spends primarily most of its life inside the tree as a wood boring larva. The adults are only seen during the summer and in Maine, 
likely adults would be out probably the earliest late July. So that's another thing. If people start reporting longhorn black beetles in May or June, we know pretty sure it's not the Asian longhorn beetle. They likely would not emerge from the trees until late July. Um, August is a really good time to probably start seeing them, the adult beetles. Um, after emergence, they'll do some maturation feeding on the trees and mate, and the female will lay eggs in these depressions in the bark. And those are pretty characteristic signs of an Asian longhorn beetle infestation. And I'll show you pictures of those a little bit later on. Generally, one egg is laid inside each of the depressions about the size of a grain of rice. Um, and then a couple weeks later, the egg hatches into a larva, um, which will start tunneling through the tree. Next slide. As the larva matures, it will bore deeper into the tree and will actually pupate in the heartwood of the tree. Um, the pupation will, generally it takes about a month and then the adult is formed and will start chewing its way out of the tree, leaving these really characteristic uh, large round exit holes about three eighths of an inch. Uh, in diameter. Next slide, please. And here are some photos of what those exit holes look like. Um, they are quite sizable. You can stick a pencil in probably a, up to two inches. Um, other, they can, other things can be confused with Asian longhorn beetle exit holes, um, like uh, maple syrup tap holes, for instance. Um, but uh, generally, the Asian longhorn beetle holes go in a little bit deeper, and um, and you would always see egg laying sites around the holes. Um, so if you only see holes and no and no egg laying sites, um, then generally it then most likely it is a different uh, thing that has made the hole. Okay, next slide, please. And here are what those egg laying sites look like. They're probably about a half inch in diameter, and they're just these kind of shallow depressions. You can actually see the mandible marks made by the uh, female beetle chewing the bark in order to lay her egg. Um, sometimes sap oozes from the exit hole or the uh, overposition sites, and the sap might attract some um, wasps or yellow jackets. So that's another kind of thing to look for. If you kind of look up in a branch and see that it's weeping, um, potentially it could be an Asian longhorn beetle egg laying site. Uh, next slide, please. And here's what infests an infested tree really looks like. This is when the, you know, it goes undetected and you've got larvae just meandering around through the wood, deep into the heartwood. Um, if you take a cross section of wood that's been infested by Asian longhorn beetle, you would see these feeding tunnels and this large pupil chamber close to the heartwood of the tree. There would also be some staining around there too. Um, and, and we do have native wood boring beetles that act in the same way, but if you see this in an otherwise healthy hardwood tree. This is cause for concern. Okay, next slide, please. And then some other signs of an Asian longhorn beetle infestation. You do have this maturation feeding that I mentioned earlier. When the beetles emerge from the tree, they'll start uh, chewing at the veins of the host trees and the tender twigs. Um, uh, of the host tree also, and that's fairly characteristic. Um, frass, which is a mixture of excrement and sawdust, would end up spilling out of some of the oviposition sites, and you might get a accumulation of frass uh, on the ground if the tree is fairly heavily infested. And then you might see bark cracking, and that's basically the larvae um, tunneling underneath the, the bark. 
and into the wood, which will cause the, the uh, uh, bark to crack. Next slide, please. And of course, there's the beetle itself and how to recognize it. Um, we, we certainly get a lot of reports, and so far they've all been false reports. Um, the Asian longhorn beetle is a very large beetle. Um, gen generally, every one I've seen have been well over an inch long. Uh, very glossy black um, uh, wing covers with really distinct white splotches on the wing covers. Sometimes there's a blue tinge and the antennae are always a banded black, black and white alternating bands. Um, the male's antennae are quite long, much longer than the body. Next slide, please. And here we have a lineup of two exotic uh, longhorn beetles and a native longhorn beetle. And if you have seen any of these, likely you are seeing number three, um, which is the white spotted Sawyer. It's black, it's, what, it's got white spots. Uh, it's got the characteristic white spot at the base of the wing covers. But if you notice there's uh, number one, there's another, um, that one has the white spot. Also, number one is another Anaphora species, not established in the United States, but has been um, intercepted a number of times. It's called the citrus longhorn beetle. It's also a major concern. Um, we don't focus on asking people if they see the white spot much anymore because of uh, we don't want to. Um, we don't want to turn turn a, up away a, pos a possible citrus longhorn beetle find. Um, but if you if you notice the sheen on the beetle um, is quite different between the two Anaplophora species and the white spotted Sawyer, and plus the uh, distinct white spots around the uh, elytra also. Okay, next slide, please. Um, and if and with any doubt, please send us a picture. We, you know, this is a picture that was submitted to the Massachusetts um, USDA office back in 2008. Um, it's not very clear, but it was clear enough for them to determine that they had a problem on their hands. Um, so this is an Asian longhorn beetle and the, the one that led to confirmation of it being discovered in Worcester, Massachusetts. They're still fighting um, they're still trying to eradicate it. 110 square miles in Worcester is Worcester County is um, still quarantined after uh, 2008, so 12 years of it being there. It takes a long time to eradicate, but it can happen. So if you do think you've seen Asian longhorn beetle or signs of an Asian longhorn beetle, please take those pictures. And um, we have an email address. You can send it to bugwatch at maine.gov, which is fairly easy. We have a website, maine.gov slash AOB, which with a report form. Um, just send us a picture, let us know where and when, and we will be in touch. And that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you so much, Karen.